माई नेम इज वजीर खानम आई वॉज बॉर्न सम टाइम अराउंड एटीन हंड्रेड एंड एलेवन आई लिव इन द डेली ऑफ टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स अगो बट माई फैमिली वॉज नॉट फ्राम द सिटी I am called Benny Madhav Ruswa but in reality I am a mere figment of my creator's imagination My creator imagined me as an only child of my parents And according to him I was born in 1840 in Nizamabad Azamgarh I was born in a place called uh, Kala Kankar House in the city of Pratapgarh in 1930. I came from a middle class Indo-Muslim family uh, where the study of literature, the study of poetry is considered to be just one of the usual thing to do. It's not that you have to acquire it. My father was a maker of plain gold ornaments in Delhi. My father's ancestors came from Kashmir. I am of Rajput lineage and I was orphaned in the great revolt of 1857. Wazir Khanum and Beni Prasad Roswa can be found in author Shamshur Rahman Farooqi's books. Seventy-nine-year-old Farooqi lives and works out of Allahabad. While his is a respected name in Urdu literary criticism, it is with his poetry and his fiction that Shamshur Rahman brings alive the world of two hundred years ago. Memory of my having been survived in bits and pieces, like fragments of torn and forgotten sheets of writing. some remained lodged in dark corners and under furniture but most were swept out with the accumulated dust of passing years of those who looked for me at least one rejected the notion that the past is a foreign country and strangers who visit there cannot comprehend its language growing up as the soul of spring i was the apple of everyone's eye the center of everyone's prayers and good wishes and i wanted to be a poet my creator wanted me to be the poet that he wanted to be but like in my fictional life his poetry became secondary to what he had to be In 1966, when I was in Allahabad, and with the encouragement and support of my wife, I began to issue my magazine called Shabkoon. That I found uh, my voice uh, and, and my feel also, because now I didn't have to wait for rejection slips from editors saying they're sorry, <laughs> you can't print your story or you can't print your your essay or your poem. Now I didn't have to worry about that. So I felt that I should give up my my fiction writing, which was my first love. and should also give up my put the put my poetry on the back burner very much on the in the back burner somewhere in the back, in the back of my mind and concentrate on criticism and thus uh, with the help of my magazine which I which I was which was now open for me for my ideas which were rather new and and a little bit unconventional i mm, i sort of i became a, an established critic in urdu over the years and uh, later on people identified me with the with the modern movement the modernist movement ai wazir khanum also known as choti begal had been lost to history for a century and a half but then someone took the pains to write my life and bring me back to it He joined the dots and filled the missing gaps as he saw it. 
I should be able to create a world of my own, which should approximate to what I think the reality would have been or should have been about those people whom I'm, whom I'm writing about, about those events which I'm narrating, those, those places which I'm talking about. So, uh, to the best of my, my, my creative and imaginative recall and recreation of, of the past, The story of life is his imagination, but the times I lived in were not. My love for poetry is not mine, but his, and with his research, he unveiled the edifice of my entire way of life. Mirza Bedil wrote, Oh, the thousands of themes that for all their brilliance and bold beauty discouraged by the alien nature of language, remained hidden behind the wings of mystery. Two books, originally written in Urdu and now in the author's own translations into English, bring alive the world of 19th century culture that flourished and ebbed with the times. Set amidst an Indo-Islamic backdrop, giants of Urdu and Indo-Persian literature crisscross stories of love and longing. In one of the stories of the sun that rose from the earth, I, Beni Madhav Ruswa, set out to meet Mirza Asadullah Khan Ghalib to have him sign a copy of his Diwan, a collection of his works. But it is not me, but my creator, who used me as an excuse to jump the barrier of time to meet someone he needed answers from. It was through me in 1862 that Shamshur Rahman Faruqi questioned Ghalib in 2001. It is certainly true that uh, I, am, I am going back into uh, Ghalib as a literary figure and trying to discuss some issues of literature. But that is only an accident because the story is about Ghalib after all. You, can, you cannot but, but take into account these things that were important to Ghalib and important for Ghalib and important for us. Now, Ruswa's uh, bold uh, treatment of Ghalib's literary beliefs, especially about his uh, uh, views about Indo-Persian Indo or Indian-Persian writers. Well, those again are my beliefs, in fact. Ruswa would not, was not really so well qualified as to <laughs> go into all that. Of what use is it to bring Ali into your conversation? His heart is burnt to nothing. And you are in a place where they don't know Naziri from Katil. I wrote poetry, but none survived. The beauty of my physical presence remained mirrored on scraps of paper. But the splendor of my thoughts and words were lost forever. History remembers me as the mother of poet Dag Delvi, but none remembered that I too wrote poetry. Wazir Khanam was a poet, that is what we have been told by, by, by contemporary accounts, but uh, none uh, of, his, of her poetry exists, I mean at present no record exists of, of her poetry as such. So I wrote all those poems myself. Her glance has the effect of magic, exactly. My beloved stresses and links in a chain are alike, exactly. On the white book of her face, the rays of morning light, exactly. In that little white lane where I left my heart is a house like paradise, exactly. How many people have you even heard of Wazir Khanam? All that they know is 
that maybe some people have, have heard that she was the mother of Mirza, Nawa Mirza Khan, now the great poet, but that's all. I am the reflection, the memory of the dazzlingly beautiful Wazir Khanum, a fiercely independent woman who took on a series of lovers and husbands and lost them all. Of course, her independence of mind and her, her determination to determine her own life by herself, to choose for her own self rather than be guided and governed by her parents or, or by con convention and rules and all that. That is what I have inferred from her life. Those people, those readers of mine who want to read it as a historical novel or, or these stories as historical stories, they are not being just to me because I, if had I intended to write historical novels, I would have chosen some major, major characters and major events in Indian history rather than these minor little things and then of course these poor unknown poets of whom only you and I know and nobody else knows. So the idea was to, to get into the cultural part of it and the culture is best expressed in among uh, people of everyday life like you and me. There is a reason why Shamsho Rahman Faruqi is obsessed with the times of Wazir Khanam and Mirza Ghalib and Daag. He believes that the literary and cultural treasure of their times cannot be allowed to be lost because artificial barriers of politics and societies have created boundaries that cut the flow of continuity. Right now, what has happened is that over the last 150 years and more, uh, we were brought up to believe that much of our literature was not really good, not really good enough for, for any world assembly. And the Ghazal, for example, has, has been facing uh, attacks from all quarters, beginning from the early modernizers of the 19th century to the modern times. That is not, it's the, and different kinds of allegations have been brought against it. Uh, similarly, the other poetry, which was uh, like uh, the Masnavi, the Qasida, and all the other older forms of poetry, uh, well, they, are, they have generally been considered to be, well, just historical antiquities, historical curiosities of no use to us. Uh, we want to create some sort of a jointure between the past and the present. The past which has ceased to exist for us. That is our tragedy, the tragedy of the modern Indian in any language in fact. Without love, the pieces of a broken heart become scattered. His love worked the thread that bound together the pages of my story of sorrow. In Mirror of Beauty, I was given these lines to recite from the 17th century Persian poet Saidi of Tehran. And I hope to make my life a living commentary on it. Richness, the power and the, and the beauty of it, a, a culture and a literary environment, a way of life, but still we really don't know about it much. How people wrote, why people wrote poetry, what was the, the place of a poet in the, in the culture, how people loved, how people fought with each other. What was the way that, that they looked at their life and love and, and people and women and men? Well, all those things are gone. And uh, so my, my um, effort has been to give them an entry into the past, to make them so you peep into the door of the past and look at the, the richness there, the, the power there, the glory and the, and the uh, variety there. Every man that I ever loved was taken from me. Everywhere I looked for stability, I was cast adrift. In the telling of my story is painted the detail of an entire civilization, a whole way of life, and the influence of the Dasta form of narrating a story. The Dastan taught me uh, what not to do while writing a uh, modern novel. Because it, the, the Dastan's great power is that it's an, it's an oral narrative. And being an oral narrative, it is supposed to identify with the audience. And the audience is supposed to identify with the Dastan narrator or the Dastan, you can say. Whereas here, the, the fiction writer is expected to remain aloof. 
ਬਿਆ ਉਹ ਜੋਸ਼ੇ ਤਮੰਨਾਏ ਦੀਦਨਮ ਬਿੰਗਰ ਬਿਆ ਉਹ ਜੋਸ਼ੇ ਤਮੰਨਾਏ ਦੀਦਨਮ ਬਿੰਗਰ ਜੋ ਅਸ਼ਕ ਅਸਰੇ ਮਿਜਗਾ ਚਕੀਦਨਮ ਬਿੰਗਰ ਜੋ ਅਸ਼ਕ ਅਸਰੇ ਮਿਜਗਾ ਚਕੀਦਨਮ ਬਿੰਗਰ ਹੀ ਸੇਸ ਦੀ ਇੰਟੈਂਸਿਟੀ ਆਫ ਮਾਈ ਲੌਂਗਿੰਗ ਫॉर ਯੂਰ ਸਾਈਟ ਕਮ ਐਂਡ ਟੇਕ ਅ ਲੁੱਕ ਦੀ ਇੰਟੈਂਸਿਟੀ ਆਫ ਮਾਈ ਲੌਂਗਿੰਗ ਫॉर ਯੂਰ ਸਾਈਟ ਕਮ ਐਂਡ ਟੇਕ ਅ ਲੁੱਕ I am about to drop like a tear from the eyelash come and take a look poetry moves through the to the dastan everywhere like a living reality so that also was was an important uh, for me a creative important creative input that poetry can be used in this way the way it was used in real life as a, or at least what i thought was real life in the 18th and the early 19th centuries uh that uh, poetry was a part of 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 people's experience people's everyday experience and not only something uh, they just um, shut down in books i am the sun that rose from the earth but the sky of poetry is bright because of me from the ninth divan of sheikh gulam hamadani mushafi collected and printed 185 years after his death the poet mushafi later wrote now the poet's life and means of livelihood is that they hawk poetry's merchandise from door to door none accept it even for free humiliated they come back home woe to poetry Like the mirror of beauty for the sun that rose from the earth Shamshur Rahman Faruqi had to perforce do the translations into English and I was driven into it because there was nobody else to do it <laughs> so they they approached a number of translators but they uh, in English I mean but uh, somehow they didn't uh, they, they drew a blank or they, they got complete refusal So my children said look, look come on you you should try to do it yourself why not So that's how I I I uh, went into this business not because uh, of any particular desire to be known in the in the in the English world as a fiction writer but because certain dances conspired uh, uh, to make me an an, uh, an English uh, writer or translator of fictions In the times that I lived in Delhi was still the heart of India and the life of the world as Mirza Ghalib said in a Persian verse I asked tell me now what is Delhi my guide said it is the soul and the world its body he uh, learned to venerate Ghalib because ghalib was presented to us by the early modernizers as a person who is closer to the to the to the inquiring mind to the western mind and who can somehow uh, talk to us across the, across the space and time that uh, separates us from him baatein hamari yaad rahe phir baatein aise na suniyega padhte kisu ko suniyega to der talak sar dhuniyega गर मशारे मीर दरुना दागों से ये भर देंगे गर मशारे मीर दरुना दागों से ये भर देंगे जरदरू शहर में फिरिएगा गलियों में नए गुल चुनिएगा दिल के तसल्ली जबकि न होगी गुफ्त शनूर से लोगों की आग फूकीगी गम की बदन में उसमें जलिए भुनिएगा विथ हिज डॉटर्स ग्रोन अप and living away with his partner in life gone away with his grandchildren in cities far away it is the way of literature a path of words surrounding him that he contemplates the nature of what should be gradually my i i began to feel that i should also try to understand the past better than what we had been taught to understand so far but there are bigger issues of human life of 
pain, of suffering, uh, of the questions of, of, the inner, of the inner self uh, and conflicts and loyalties and so forth which have to be which have to be addressed. My idea was to let people understand that without the past there can be no present and without the without the past there can be no future either. So you must know what exactly you have lost or what exactly you have you could have you could gain.